Hi YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the topic of surgical addiction whilst doing a deep dive into the character of Carl Rupert Cronin from the Hellboy franchise. So we're going to be looking at procedures like eyelid removals, prosthetic body parts and how people develop masochistic personality types. But before we begin, let us know down below if there's any other characters you'd like us to break down. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's begin. Subject, Karl Ruprecht Cronin. Born in Munich, 1897. Suffered from a masochistic compulsion, commonly known as surgical addiction. So it appears as though Cronin suffers from a form of masochism. Now, this is a psychological term that refers to a pattern of behaviour where people derive either pleasure or gratification from experiencing either psychological or physical harm, suffering or humiliation. And this can manifest in a number of different forms. For example, you've got a sexual form where people derive sexual pleasure from either experiencing pain or humiliation during sexual activities, or a psychological form where people derive pleasure from emotional pain, humiliation or degradation. In this case, he derives pleasure from self-harm, such as cutting or performing these surgical procedures on himself. And the professor refers to this as being a surgical addiction, which is actually a rare psychiatric condition where people have the compulsive need to undergo unnecessary medical or surgical procedures. And I've seen some cases of this where people have undergone so much extreme surgery that they no longer really resemble that of a normal human being. Both eyelids surgically removed. along with his upper and lower lip. Okay, so in this scene we hear the professor talking through just some of the surgical procedures that Cronin has performed on himself. But you might ask, why these ones specifically? Well, firstly, it sounds like he's performed an extreme form of a blepharoplasty in which excess skin is normally removed from above the eyelids. However, it looks like he's removed his eyelids altogether, and I can only imagine he's done this to allow him to remain alert at all times in the event of being attacked. Now, moving down to his lips, there's a number of reasons as to why he might have removed these. Firstly, he may have done this in an attempt to increase his respiratory function. By eliminating these soft tissues of his lips, he may have aimed to increase the airflow and oxygen intake, possibly improving his endurance. On the other hand, he may have altered his facial structure to allow him to accommodate the integration of machinery into his anatomy or enhance his ability to wear masks or helmets without obstruction. What I think personally is that it's probably more symbolic of his commitment to his cause or allegiance to the dark forces. You see, I think the mutilation of his face represents his rejection of humanity or a sacrifice made in service of his dark beliefs. The blood in his veins dried up decades ago. Only dust remains. So this is probably one of the most interesting and fantastical elements of Cronin's anatomy, where it looks like he's replaced some of his vital structures with mechanical components, for example his heart. And I find this interesting because like a clock ticks, your heart beats. Now from my understanding of the Hellboy storyline, Cronin had a fascination with both clocks and the pursuit of a perfect body, which caused him to integrate the clocks into his anatomy. And so it seems as though in the pursuit of immortality, Cronin has integrated time itself into his body. But is something like this even possible? Well, of course, unfortunately not. You'd need both a circulation and a beating heart to keep a human body alive. However, at this point, can we still call Cronin a human? Or is he more machine than he is man? I guess this is relevant because if he's more machine, then something like this is certainly possible. What a horrible will could keep such a creature as this alive. So what could motivate someone to go down the route of all of this body modification and surgical addiction like Cronin? 
So, from my understanding of his backstory, Cronin was a child prodigy, having an angelic voice which secured him fame around Europe. However, at the onset of puberty, his voice deepened, ruining his voice and his career as a singer. Thus, from a young age, he developed a deep dislike for the natural order of things. Now, consumed by his self-loathing of the awkwardness of his body, Cronin took to whipping himself with an oak branch, with his pain quickly turning to pleasure as he did so. And as he got older, this mixture of masochism and self-hatred developed into an obsession with body perfection and ultimately transformed into his surgical addiction. I didn't know puberty could be this tough. Okay, so here we can see Cronin's mechanical hand in a scene that resembles that of Arnold Schwarzenegger's in the Terminator movie. And what I like about the design of this hand is that it's almost got a steampunk appearance. However, if I remember correctly, this hand wasn't something that he had intentionally surgically removed, but rather it was blown off earlier in an attempt to try and prevent a grenade from going off. And of course, I'm sure you're all aware, or at least familiar with the concept of a prosthetic limb. And this type of replacement would certainly be possible with today's technology. In fact, they've even developed prosthetic limbs that can respond to the most subtle of nerve impulses to allow the users a greater form of dexterity. <laughs> he kind of looks like a member of the Daft Punk band here, doesn't he? But nonetheless, what we're seeing here is Cronin winding up his chest gear in anticipation of what I can only assume is going to be a fight. And this is pretty cool because it tells us that although Cronin's anatomy might be more mechanical, it seems as though his physiology still resembles that of a human. However, it's something that he can control. For example, when we see him winding up his gear, I'd imagine he's doing this to increase his heart rate in anticipation of some level of exertion. Now, this process would also occur in the human body, but just automatically. And then a little later on, we see him dialing down his chest gear, I assume to slow down his heart rate to make it almost appear as though he's dead. This is a very cool power, which I imagine might help to explain how Cronin's been able to live so long. The freak in the gas mask, Karl Rupert Cronin, Hitler's top assassin and head of the Thule Occult Society. Okay, so probably one of Cronin's most iconic features is this gas mask that he's seen to be wearing in most scenes. But what purpose might this serve? Well, it's thought that he wears these masks as his character seems to be somewhat of a germaphobe, and so he uses the mask to help filter out any bacteria or any elements that might damage his underlying skin. Also, like any mask, it effectively conceals his underlying facial features, adding to his air of mystery and anonymity. You see, by obscuring his identity, the mask reinforces his enigmatic persona, making him a more formidable and unsettling antagonist. So, although Cronin's seen to be firing a gun in multiple scenes in the movie, in the Hellboy lore, he's actually a masterful fencer, and probably known more iconically for wielding these two concealed blades. Now, despite his addiction to surgically modify his anatomy, these swords aren't actually attached or fused to his bones, but rather they're worn on his person with the ability to retract or release with a simple hand gesture. And ultimately, it's this that makes this weapon such a badass reveal. So after 
failing to retrieve a grenade that had been thrown into the portable machine by our young professor, we see that Cronin gets blown back and impaled on an iron rod before losing consciousness. Clearly such an injury would have broken his back and pierced through his aorta, leading him to hemorrhage to death. However, we later look back at the wall and somehow mysteriously he's disappeared and possibly evaded death. Now, in the Hellboy storyline, with the help of science and black magic, Cronin was able to repair both his hand and his spine with him being revived later on in the story. And interestingly, if we look back to the scene where the professor is almost performing a post-mortem, we can see that in the background there's some x-rays that demonstrate some iron rods that have gone into his spine, which I assume has been put there to repair his back injury. I like the way that Gimel del Toro paid specific attention to scenes like this. So following on from Cronin's revival and the incorporation of black magic into his anatomy, he now almost appears to be both bulletproof as well as a contortionist. But what might be the explanation for this? Well, in an earlier scene, it's mentioned by the professor that Cronin's blood dried up many years ago, and we see another scene where he takes several bullets, and rather than bleed blood, we see both sand or dust pour out of his body. Now, what normally causes you to die after being shot is the massive amount of blood loss, and so, if you don't have any blood, hey presto, you're an immortal. Unfortunately, this does mean that his circulation is just a fantastical element of the Hellboy storyline and isn't something that can be explained by modern medicine, at least not by me. On the other hand, regarding his contortionist-like movements, many contortionists are able to perform feats like this that almost appear to be impossible, but it's often due to a genetic propensity for being more flexible, early flexibility training, as well as specific training techniques to make something like this almost appear to be child's play. Out. There's something very eerie, or should I say uncanny, about seeing Cronin here appreciating listening to music, especially considering we know his background and his transition from being a human to whatever kind of monster he is now. I think it's because the appreciation of music is often seen as a human trait, and everything that we've seen from Cronin up until now has been anything but humane. It kind of makes you question that if he's able to experience pleasure like this, then is part of him still human? And if so, this makes all of his kills up until now that much more brutal. <laughs> Ah yes, I forgot that Hellboy was the adoptive son of the Professor. But looking back at Cronin, what looked like a protective mask now looks like a coffin for his head. And this mask looks very different from the one that we've seen him wearing earlier. And what makes this interesting is that it looks like Cronin has various different types of mask depending on the occasion. For example, having a combat mask that we've seen earlier, and then one like this when he's just sitting down and chilling. And I think this gives us a further insight into Cronin's psychology as a character. Clearly, if he's got multiple different designed masks, you've got to consider whether part of this is just to intimidate his enemies. Clearly, each mask contributes to his overall aura of menace and unpredictability, making him that much more of a formidable antagonist in the Hellboy universe. <laughs> So clearly, this is a far more effective way to neutralize an immortal opponent, confine them or trap them, rather than trying to find a way to kill them. 
and I'm sure there's some kind of poetic irony here, but what ends up sealing his fate is a clock gear that he was once so fascinated with. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and our breakdown of this very unique character's anatomy. Let me know if there's any other characters that you'd like me to analyse down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.